has a near upside down record 17 16 and 3 but we always say this about Crell don't be fooled by the record he's been an extremely tough he's the kind of guy that when the phone rings he's grabbing the shoes and he's out the door and he's only been stopped once yeah, these kind of guys, Joe, can be the toughest for a young fighter like Rodriguez to fight because they, they do have the record that's upside down. He's got he's got 16 losses, so if he loses tonight, does he really lose anything? So he's got everything to gain. All the pressure is on Rodriguez. And and sometimes if a young prospect isn't on point, a guy like Krell can, can make him look bad and sometimes upset him. Well, there's one thing that I see, Dre, that Krell doesn't have, and that's that ooh-wee, pow-pow. The guy that has that power is Rodriguez, and he can change the fight in the blink of an eye. Boy, does he ever. Remember we saw him back on July 2nd. He was in against Dan Murray. Now, listen, limited competition with Dan Murray, but he had that snapping swivel jab that finished the fight. I mean, Murray was like laid out after he threw the lead and then came back and swiveled positions with a jab, and he knocked him out with a jab in that. Rodriguez originally from the Dominican Republic, but he has been dedicating himself well out in Los Angeles working at the wild card gym with Freddie Roach. So you see right away, you see Krell stepping on the front foot, the lead foot of Rodriguez. You know, that does two things. That it gets your opponent off of balance. Rodriguez can be off balance if he throws a shot. And plus, you know, it kind of frustrates him as well. I, the referee hasn't seen it yet. But if this continues, the referee probably will step in and say, hey, stop stepping on each other's foot. Good work with that right hand from Rodriguez. Started going to the body and then turned it into an uppercut. See, the thing that I'm surprised at this at this very moment is the fact that Krell is actually throwing his jab and he's it is being effective with his jab. You know, it's kind of slowed down Rodriguez's offense a little bit by landing his jab. The thing I've been most impressive with uh, about Rodriguez is not not just the wins and how he's won but the fact that he's a full-time fighter and how do I know that this is his fifth fight this year you know he fought twice in July this year that lets me know that he's not going back home to the Dominican Republic and, and, and partying after these fights or wasting a lot of time in between fights he's staying in LA he's staying in the gym and he has no choice but to get better yeah when we spent time with Freddie Roach last night to that point Dre he said really the only thing with this young man is loves being on the cell phone to call back home. If that's the biggest that's complaint, the worst thing that's the worst thing, you know, missing thing. your family and just being on the cell phone a lot, calling back home to DR. That's right. Time. I, I'm, I'm warning them. Yeah, man. Hey, bro. <laughs> see, this is going to happen between the Southpaw and the Orthodox fighter, the lead foot right there. You see Krell stepping on the lead foot of Elvis Rodriguez. See, that's going to keep him still. That's going to knock him off balance, and that's going to frustrate him. That is veteran hey, tactics from Krell. No okay. hey, bring your hand back to your face. Come shoot back with the right hand. Well, All right, work let's go. All right, how you feeling? Good? Yeah. Let's go, baby. Watch this. Uh, watch your feet. Watch your feet now. Watch your feet stepping on it. There we go. You just heard Tony Weeks before the start of this second round. Give them the warning about the feet. That's the punch if I'm Freddie Roach that I'm urging my charge to continue to use. And that's the right jab because, you know, the level of competition is, is, is one thing now. But as you slowly start to creep up and they have Rodriguez on the fast track, he's going to need those elements of his game. And you don't want the young fighter to, 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 to fight, you know, to the level of competition. You want him to fight up even when he's facing a guy that really shouldn't be in the ring with him. And that's a mindset. See, what I like about Krell right now, what he's doing is he's not giving ground. He's standing, he's, he's forcing the younger fighter to fight at his pace, and he's putting pressure on him little by little to see what he knows. 
He's fighting behind a tight guard, Dre. Yeah. And to your point, Tim, I'd like to see Crell let his hands go because he's got decent pop. You know, he's got good offense like you see right there. He's got to let his shots go if he's going to have a chance in this fight. Krell is also a guy that stays in the gym year round. You know, when you have a, a fighter that's just standing directly in front of you and he's putting those earmuffs on or Olympic style defense, whatever you want to call it, I mean, those are, it's a perfect opportunity to start loading up on stuff. Going to the outside, coming around the guard, coming around those elbows with body shots, coming up the middle, splitting the guard with the uppercut. You know, a lot of these guys, they just stand and they just watch. You know, and that's what I'm seeing from Rodriguez. At times, he just stands and watch, and when he can be getting off uh, combinations. He was able to wrap that right hand around that left elbow and land a body shot about 15 seconds ago. He served doing there more it is. with that. He hurt him with that. He hurt him with that right hook. You see Krell taking a walk, and then another right hand is able to get in. Good body shot with the straight left hand. You can see that pop as Rodriguez steps into it. There's that right hand to the body again. Right hook up top, dominating. Second round here for Melvis Rodriguez. Crail affected once again, back against the ropes. Wrong place to be against Elvis. What I'm talking about, getting outside no, positioning right here with the lead foot here. You see Rodriguez, how he's going to get his foot outside right there. He's in the safe zone right there at that moment. When he's outside right there, there's no way Creole can go to his... Power team. punches through the first two rounds. He has been dominant. Start of round number three. You see the last round, he had a 23-2 to two connect advantage in power punches, according to CompuBox. You know, we asked him when we visited with him last night about all the hype, about being the guy that is among the most talked about prospects in the game. Oh, the right hook clipped him up top. So once again, getting to Crail early on here in round three. And he said, you know, it's really complicated for me because I know what the experts are saying, but I got to live up to it. And he does so with his first knockdown of the night here. Right hook floors Crail. Remember, Crail's only been stopped once, folks. Seven, eight, nine, ten. That's it. Elvis does it again, and he will strike that pose and strum the guitar. Came out to a hunk of hunk of burning love, and this is why everybody loves him, and there is that pose.